Uh, in that case, you're probably tired and hay fever. Take a hay fever tablet. Uh, you'll find them in the medicine area. Hang on, I'll come and find them. They've got fucking pictures. Take one of those, you'll feel better pretty fast. But you will be glass. It's okay, you'll go and get there. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. So you have it. It's also cold. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Oh, good. Face still more. Hooray. Okay, I can see the words Faye have appeared on our screen. I cannot hear Faye, but I'm sure Faye is there. I haven't you... said anything yet. Ah, oh, there's Faye. Hello, Faye. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I am good, thank you. So I've got Thorne here with me. Um, next Thursday, um, <laughs> we might have a third member of our crew because um, Nick, who owns Games Galaxy, his son is wanting to bone up on Unreal Engine before he goes to university. So I've said, yeah, if he wants to participate, that's entirely up to him. Well, um, you should be charging him. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Honestly, it's Nick, you know. Yeah, get some free games. <laughs> well, you know, scrap, giving someone free things often leads to good things down the road. The value of karma can't be understated. Um, <laughs> right, let me just... Uh, I'm trying to remember how to do the sharing because I haven't done this in a couple of weeks. Here we go. Portion of screen, share. Okay, so you should be seeing at the minute my Unreal Engine launcher. Yep. Excellent, Okay. So should you, Thorne. So before we get started, um, I know that Thorne's had a bit of dabbling in, Un in Unreal Engine. I know you've listened to one of my long, boring talks about Unreal Engine in the past as well. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to basically a good the starting area, okay, how we start off with Unreal Engine. I want to get you two on a level field, and then from there, we're going to add to it. Now, if there's anything that you think you know, same for you, Thorne, because I know you're quiet as a mouse a lot of the time. If there's anything you think that I'm covering that you're like, oh, I know enough about this one already, you know. Um, if you're both of that opinion, that's fine. We can move on. 
but I'm going to try and cover as much as I can without overwhelming you guys, okay? And once I have, then I'm going to, you know, give you to probably a little bit of homework to practice with in your own time, just so you can get the hang of this. Now, a couple of things. This week, okay, we're going to be using Unreal Engine 5, well, 5.0.1, the most current version of Unreal Engine. Um, this week, we're just going to use an empty project. Next week, I thought it might be more useful for us if we're all using this. So if I go to samples, there's this thing called the Lyra starter game. Now, I've chosen that because it's a good example of current gameplay methodology and stuff like that. And I thought it might be more interesting for the pair of you. Um, if it's not, by all means, say no, that's not interesting at all. But this is pretty good stuff. You know, it's uh, pretty well designed. There's a lot of stuff we can put into it and we can talk about you know, taking our own version of this and adapting it and doing all sorts of things. So I think you'll enjoy it. Now, for the first start, first bit we're going to do, I presume you both know how this bit works, the Unreal Engine Launcher. Are you okay with this, Thor? You okay with this, Faye? Yep. Right, as long as you understand the launcher, that's the important bit. Right, hang on a second, I've just got a message arrived for me. Ah, great. Okay, I've got a thing off um Juke to look at later okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start a new project now it's kind of changed a bit unreal engine 5 in that what it'll do now is it'll launch the last project you worked on so when i click launch now it's probably going to launch the wiki but that's okay because in the wiki i've got um a very small level as the start level so it won't take forever and ever and ever so let's give it a couple of minutes um and once we've done this we're going to go to the template system and i'm going to show you a couple of the templates because I'd like you guys to obviously start messing around with this yourselves and having a bit of a play with it and stuff and tell you which ones are useless and which ones aren't useless anymore. Because it has changed a lot since Unreal Engine 4. There's a lot of new stuff in it. <laughs> Don't want me lovely. If you can't see it any time, just say, I can't see shit and uh, we'll sort it out. I can see an octopus. Well, that's a good start then. You could be able to see the corner of my loading screen. Yeah. Yeah, there she blows. It's because obviously it's on like 4K and sharing 4K just makes it messy. Nearly there. God almighty. There's a plant in a hotel. Here we go. Right. Face on me. Okay, so I've got lots and lots of screens that are open that aren't actually part of this. So I'll just quickly show you by stretching this out. You can see that I've got screens and screens and screens of stuff. But the main one I'm interested in is this one. Okay, now I'm going to go from, click on file and I want to make a new project. So if I click on new project and here's the template system. So if you've made a project before in Unreal Engine, you'd have seen this before. If not, this is where we are all going to start from. Okay. And because we're going to start off with game shit, because game shit's much, much faster, there's now only seven base templates. So there's blank, which is completely empty. First person, where you get your toy gun to play with. Third person, which is side scrolly shit. Top down, which is top down. VR, artificial reality, and one with a test vehicle in it. Okay, so all good stuff. The one we're going to start with is first person. Okay. And we're going to use a blueprint version, not C++, because C++ is my enemy. Uh, we're going to build for target platform desktop. Quality is going to be maximum. No matter what computer you use, maximum will be fine. Starter content is going to be included. And we're not going to turn on ray tracing, because we've got no real need to use ray tracing at the minute anyway. Lumen's more than good enough. OK, so click Create. Right, so this will go off and make the various files for me and open this new and exciting project. So I shall imagine products that I might like to buy while I'm doing. Do, 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 do. Why did Law be able to actually cycle home at six in the morning tomorrow? That should be exciting for him. Uphill. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be in what kind of electric bike is it? Like a pedal bike? Yeah, it's a pedal bike. It's got gear. It's actually got gears and it cruises. He tested it out going uphill in, um, on the Dean and it seemed to work okay for him. So, Oh, God. Okay. Right then, so a little button appeared that just said update project files. So I clicked that. It always helps to click that shit because it gets it done. All right. Now, 
I'm going to quickly move around my scene. So to explain the basics, just in case or in case you've forgotten, my right mouse button is basically going to turn on look view so I can look around my scene and look at stuff. W, S, A and D are going to move me around. E goes up, D goes down. So W, S, A, D, E, Q. OK, it's a standard keyboard layout as if you were playing a video game. Really, really, really easy. Now, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to moving around and looking at things. So here's a good example. Let's say I want to look at this box over here that I've just clicked on. And uh, this gizmo has just appeared here. So we'll use W, A, S and D. And that lets us line up with objects so we can get in nice and close. What we could also do is press F for focus, F. And now if I hold down Alt, I can rotate around the object or I can zoom in and out using my mouse button or just use W, A, S and D. And it's a good way of zooming in and out on things. Now, what you'll notice when I click on it is over here on the right, it's selected the actual object itself because this is the list of every single object that's in our scene. So this is SM Chamfer Cube 5. Okay, so if I wanted to select another object, I could click on it and it would appear in the list. Or if I know which one it is, I could go oh, SM Chamfer Cube 4 or 5 rather and come back to it or 4 or whatever it is and just find them that way. So we can find things inside of it that way. Another thing we could do is we can use the search engine if you're not entirely sure. So let's say I only want cube. I could just type in the word cube. And just like a normal search, anything that's got the word cube in will appear. I can also do other kinds of search in this, like static mesh, and it'll only find static mesh actors. If I had particles in my scene, I could type in particle, and it'll only find particles. Especially if I can spell it, you get the point. And things like that, okay? So it's very, very easy to find things. The reason I'm burning through these really quickly is because I don't want you to get caught up too much in the interface. If there's anything that confuses you, and I know that you're not one for asking questions and keeping nice and quiet, Faye, so I'm talking to you specifically, but if there's anything that confuses you, just shout, I'm not sure what that is, okay? I won't think any less of anyone for not being 100% on things. Well, now, do. that's the spirit. <clears throat> okay, so you can see that a lot's changed from Unreal Engine 4. Um, I mean, it may be a while since we've loaded up Unreal Engine, but if we look at things, now the shadowing is much, much better than it used to be. You can see here that we've got like proper global illumination shadows in here where it's actually calculating the shadows properly. And we haven't had to put on um, ray tracing or things like that. That really makes games look a lot, lot better than they ever used to. Um, a good example of that would be, okay, if we're talking about Lumen, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a very, very basic shape inside Unreal Engine to kind of show you how I do it. So if I come over here to shapes, and you see here on my classes, we've got a shapes button in the panel. And I'll click on cube and just drag it to the ground. And you can see it's kind of half buried at the minute. So I'm gonna drag it up. Now, when I drag it up, it's clipping. So it's, connect, it's going up like 10 units at a time. That's because I've got this enabled here, which is enabling and disabling snapping set to 10 units. So I can move it 10 units at a time. If I wanted to, I could set it to 100 units at a time or 50 or 500, you know, just whatever I want to use with it. But to be honest, 10 is going to be fine here. Now, I'm going to scale it in. So to scale it in, I can switch between my different gizmo types. So I can press space bar and that will cycle between the three of them. Or I can just press W, E or R. So W is move, E is rotate and R is scale. And what I want to do is I just want to scale it on one single axis. So I'm just going to pull in on that one. And you can see that's snapping as well. Now, you've probably worked out by now, OK, that snapping is turned on for scaling. We could turn that off if we wanted to. That's entirely up to you. OK, now, now that I've done that, I'm going to scale it to a bit wider. So how much wider? I don't know about that. OK, so what I've done is I've now created this kind of long, low wall. And this is just so that I can show you kind of what the global illumination light is like, but at the same time, I'm also showing you how to move and place objects. So what I'll do now is if I go to my move tool, <coughs> W or space, whichever is easiest, 
what I can do is I can make a copy of this and I can put it on top of it. So I've got two. Or I could, you know, use scale and make it twice as high or whatever I want, but I'm just going to copy it. Now, before I do that, let's give it a name so that I can remember what it is if I need to search for it in the outliner. So if I click on it at the minute, you see it says cube. So I will hit F2 and I'm going to rename this to, I don't know, tunnel wall part. Okay, because this is going to be a basic tunnel wall part C. And now what I can do is I can either do control C and control V, which will make me a quick copy, and I can move it up like that. Or I could hold down Alt and drag, and that will make me a copy as well. So either way you want to do it is up to you. Now, press control Z, because I only want two of them really, that would be enough. And what I want to do now is I want to copy both of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of them, and then I'll press control and select the other one. So now I've got two selected. And what I'm going to do is just alt and drag and drag them across like that. So now I've got an area to go through. Okay, so you can probably see where I'm going with this. What I'll do now is I'll take this piece. I'm going to hold the rotate key, which is E, or remember space to cycle through. Hold down alt and drag, or remember, control C, control V, just like you would with a document, that'll do it too. So it's entirely up to you what you feel most comfortable doing it with. But I'm just gonna do it that way. And then I'm gonna drag it this way. There we go. And if I look, they're not quite central. Well, that's okay, because what I can do is I can select both of them and just move them along a little bit. There we go. And now what we've got is a little tunnel. Okay, now, if you've been following along with this piss easy adventure with how to maneuver objects around inside of Unreal Engine, what I could do here is right click on the ground and click play from here. And as if by magic, we have an object that we can go through, our very own tunnel. Now this may seem in inconsequential. This may seem like, well, what the fuck does that matter? But this is actually a thing that if you've followed along and done it, this is actually a thing inside of a game engine. And all we have to do is press a couple of buttons and this will come out as an actual game that you can give to someone and go, look, I did that. It's literally that easy. Now, this is obviously a very basic starting point. And this is where I wanted to show you one of the new things that's came inside of Unreal Engine called Lumen. Now, if I go over here to edit and go to project settings, there we go. So this is where all the meat and potatoes are kept inside of Unreal Engine. This is where all the settings are. And um, this basically just writes directly to the INI file. So you've got stuff here like what your project name is, what your version is, stuff that like would be linked to the executable when it's built. But other things we've got link directly to the engine. So for example, you can go down here and change all sorts of important things. And the one I'm interested in here is rendering, because rendering is how it presents stuff on the screen. Now with rendering selected, if I scroll down and scroll down and scroll down for a few minutes, because there's a lot of stuff here, what you will eventually come across in about a year, maybe longer, are the Lumen settings, because Lumen is the default system set up inside of this. So let me see, have we got Lumen set up, auto exposure, bloody, 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 where is it? Global illumination. There we go, just type it in, it's easier. Global illumination, and the dynamic global illumination method it's using is Lumen rather than using um, ray tracing. And this is much, much faster. And the thing about global illumination is that unlike in other older game engines, including Unreal Engine, if we have an object that, for example, is glowing or emissive, it will emit light inside of a lumen volume realistically. So not only can we use lights, and I'll just click on this light tab just to drag in a quick point light to show you. But let's say, put in a quick point light, and I'll change its details to a candler value of maybe four, an attenuation radius of 250, so really low, maybe 100. There you go. So there you go. So not only can we like have really high control over lights inside of these things like this, but if we have an object where the material is making it look like it's glowing, so let's say a glowing light bulb, for example, then the glowing light bulb model will also cast light in a very realistic manner. 
Now, a benefit of this is if I press G, I just press G to go into game mode. So that hides all the tools and G unhides it again. Let's say I get from my shapes a nice simple cylinder here. Okay. And I'm just going to scale it in a little bit because it's a bit big. There we go. And then I'm going to move it up. There we are. Okay. Now, if this light that I've got here is instead of being white, maybe a nice bluey color, you'll see this better than me, the way that the bluey color is now affecting the other objects in the scene properly. Because what's happening is basically the blue light wavelength is bouncing off this wall, bouncing off the ceiling, bouncing off back here, and then bouncing onto the back of this cylinder and giving fully realistic light looks, which is so much better than what we had in the past where, you know, they basically look like arse. Now, I'll get rid of these again. So those are the basics of placing objects inside of our scene. Okay, the very, very, very basics. But what I want to do is I want to show you how we're going to set up something nice and basic with some tables and chairs and walls so that you can recreate this yourself. Because what I'd like you two to do is basically follow along with a short thing I'm going to show you on how to set up a few simple lights, how to set up a few simple items inside of a room, um, and basically close it off so you can walk around inside of it. OK, so it may sound terrifying, but I promise you it isn't. So first things first, let's get a file new level. Now, what it does is it gives you four things that you can work from here, okay? Open world, empty open world, basic, and empty level. And what we're gonna start with is empty level and click create. And we're doing that because empty level is the scariest place to start. Now, you'll see here, it says, do you want to save any of this stuff? Nah, I'm not keeping it, so there's no point. Okay, there we go. So now we've got this nice new level. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go control and S and save it. And then I can give it a name. So I can call this map indoors because that's what it's going to be. Now, at the minute, we can't see anything because there's nothing here. This is like, you know, one second before the Big Bang. Absolutely nothing to see here. If we put down objects in our scene, like planes or cones or anything like that, you'll notice that the lighting is really, really flat. You can't really see much detail at all because there's no lighting in the scene either. There's no sun, no anything. Well, we can fix the problem about not having any sun straight away. So what I'm going to do is if I go here to window and scroll down a little bit, you'll see this thing here called the environmental light mixer. And this is relatively new. Now, if I click on it, what it does is it gives you a load of buttons here. And these buttons will allow you to create a basic lighting system inside Unreal Engine without even having to do much. So the first thing, let's create a skylight. So you click the first button. And here's all the settings for the skylight if you want to change it. Then we'll create an atmospheric light. Then we'll create mm, a sky atmosphere. Then we'll create some volumetric clouds. And then we'll create some height fog. There we go, we're done. And that's it. It's lit our scene for us. We didn't have to do anything. We just used the environmental light mixer. And the good thing about that is that, you know, if you want to change the time of day, for example, Select your directional light, go to rotate, and just move it as if it's the sun in the sky. And it'll change the time of day based on exactly where it is. So if you want early morning dawn or whatever, you can have that. Realistic light is just literally that simple. It'll cast shadows and all that kind of thing. We'll not go into the details on it too much yet, but have a play around with it. Very, very easy to use. Up there, we've got volumetric clouds. They always look really nice because they're procedural, so they've got infinity detail. Lovely. OK, so let's find a place that we can work from to actually drag some things into our scene. Now, down here in the bottom left, you can see there's a thing called Content Draw. And this is like a pop-up where you can grab various things from. And you can see here we've got folders that contain things and stuff like that. Now, I don't really like this pop-up drawer. I find it a little bit aggravating. So what I tend to do is I go to Window, Content Browser, and open one up manually. And then you'll get something like this pop up. And if you've got two monitors, for example, this is way easier because it means you can stick this one on another screen. Now, you'll notice my icons are pretty darn big and chunky. I'll leave them that way because that's how I like to work. So inside here, because we've chosen the basic stuff that comes with it, i.e. start a content level prototyping, if we go inside here, 
and go to meshes, you can see here's some basic shapes that we can just drag straight into our scene if we want to, right? So we've got all these basic shapes here that allow us to do things, something called level prototyping. But on top of that, if I go back, I can press, you know, my left, um, not left mouse, but my back button or whatever the heck it's called, go back here. If we go at the starter content, here's some starter stuff that might come in useful for us as well. So we've got in architecture, some basic walls and pillars and shapes. Uh, we've got some basic, ignore all the other folders in props. We've got a load of basic props and that's all we need to get started. Okay, this is all we need to get started. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna move my content browser just over to here so I can see what I'm doing at the same time. And in fact, what I could do is I could dock it if I want to just here. There we go. Okay, let's make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to go back one because uh, I want to find the architecture stuff. There we go. And inside here, I want to drag out a floor. So I'm just dragging the floor out. And I want this to be placed pretty much central inside of my world. OK, I don't have to, but I'm going to. Now, if I come over here, this is our properties panel. This is where all the details for each item inside my scene are. If I scroll up a little bit, we can see we've got a location thing here. OK. X, Y, and Z, that marks its location in the world. So I could put it at location zero, 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 and now it is at location zero in the world. So it should be nice and easy to find. Sorry, I've got a boop noise. I'm not sure what the hell that was. Um, nothing important, probably. Hang on. Uh, it's someone, but I'll answer him in a minute. I'm busy. Okay, so what we've got is we've got this in zero, zero, zero space. So it's in the very middle of our world, which will make things a little bit easier for us. Now you'll see here, we can actually adjust its rotation and its scale as well if we wanted to in real time. So for example, if I wanted it 50 units higher and wanted it, you know, rotated 45 degrees, I could do that. Or I could reset it all again by just changing these all to zero. So we can do it that way rather than even using these. So depending on how you like working, you can do that. But I'm just going to have it there. And now what I'm going to do is if I mouse over the top of this, we can see that its size is 400 by 400 by 20. Now, Unreal Engine units are centimeters. So that's four meters by four meters by 20 centimeters thick. And that's useful to us because if I come over here and set my snap value to 100, it means that I can easily just copy it and make a floor. Okay, so lift off, off alt, put it down again, do it again, lift up off alt, do it again. And now I've got a floor, okay, a very simple working floor. Now I'll extend this a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll select both of these two by holding one, hold control, hold the other, and just go to here. There we go. And I'm just going to make a very simple shape. So I'm going to make a cross shape, okay. Right, that's done. Now, with that done, what I can do is I can just right click on here and click play, and we can test it, see how it looks. Now, bear in mind that the first person character is gonna look skewy because I've got the screen compressed. If I had the screen at normal, normal width, it wouldn't look like that, but it will do for the minute. I'll just move this actually into here to make it a bit better. There we go, just move that up from there. Very configurable. Right, so if I click play from here now, there we go, a little bit more sensible. Now, what I want to do is I want to put some walls around this. So I'm going to scroll down inside my architecture stuff until I find a wall that's 400 by 400. Here's one. And if I drop it in my scene, there we go. I've still got snaps on, so I should be able to grid snap it into place fairly easily. There we go. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to copy this into the relevant positions that I want it. I can rotate it as well. So I'll hold Alt and rotate. And you can probably see how I'm doing this. Now I work very fast because obviously I do this all day, every day. This will probably take a little bit longer just to get used to the methodology of it. But once you are, it's very, very simple to do. Um, you can start throwing together shapes ridiculously easily. There we go. There's another one and another one, and then I'll bring these two down, so I'm holding them. 
drag. And then I just need to bring this one over and this one, and then copy them. There we go. See, that was nice and easy. So now what we've got is we've got a very simple kind of defined space here, okay, with things inside of it, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, I need a ceiling. So for a ceiling, what I can do is I can select the floor. Now, if I don't want to have to go through the process of individually clicking each of these, I know they're all called floor. So I can come over here, select the first one, scroll down to the end, hold shift and click. And that will select the end one and all the ones in between as well. And now all I need to do is what I did before, hold alt and drag. Bom, 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 done. There we go. Okay, so now we're inside our very, very dark thing and it is dark in there. Now, why is it so dark? Well, because our sunlight can't get in there. So no light can get in to do anything. Bit of a bugger, really. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some windows. Now we've already got walls. Hang on. There we go. So we've already got this wall, but what we want to do is put some windows in. And I think a good place for windows would be these edges here and here, yeah? So I'm gonna select that one and that one, and I'm gonna select that one and that one. Now, architecturally, you tend to only have windows facing one side of the small building uh, because otherwise it tends to look cluttered. Now, to replace it, if I scroll down in my architecture until I get to wall window 400 by 400, we know 400 by 400 is this size anyway. So I'll click it. And then over here, I'll right click on one of the objects I've selected and replace my selected actors with my wall window. And as if by magic, we now have little wall windows. And now if I go in, you can see our lighting starts to gather inside. We're getting light bounces coming in, hitting our white walls. The white walls, because they're white, because of the nature of light and physics, they're tending to give us a lot of this bloom, which is why things look quite fuzzy and bright like this. You've got to think in real world kind of what light affects what and shit, you know? Anyway, yep, that looks fine to me. So we've got an unlit room, but lights coming in through our windows, leaving shadows and looking quite nice. So let's look at applying some simple texture, okay? Now, <clears throat> if I click on my wall, you'll notice if we go to our details panel here, We've got our static mesh, but we also have our materials. And our materials are the basic materials that are just applied to this. Now, some objects may have one material, some objects may have 10 materials. Most often they'll have one because it's more economical. And fortunately for us, we already have some materials that we can use if we want to, that are pre-made for us as part of this set. So if I go and press back, and then scroll down in my starter content, I'll come across my materials folder. And inside here, you can see lots and lots and lots of different kinds of materials. Okay, well, what we should do is we should put some tiles down on the floor. So I'll get my ceramic tile checker and just drag it to the floor there. And what it does is it automatically overrides the material that was on it if it's only got one material. Another thing I could do is I could select my floor and I can drag this and drop it into the material slot. It will do the same thing. And another thing I can do if I select lots of them, so all I'm doing is selecting all of my floors here. I'm sure you can guess this one. There we go. Is I can take this and drop it on the material slot with them all selected and it will do all the floors. Fantastic, that's what I wanted. Okay, so we've got that done. What about our walls though? Well. Let's select all of our walls. So I'll scroll to my first wall and then scroll to my last one. And everything's called wall, including the windows, because what we did was we replaced its mesh, but not its name. Now what I can do is I can have a look through here, but I can go and attach some bricks. And there we go. And you notice it darkens our scene immediately because the bricks are darker, so they're absorbing more light. If I change it for a different kind, so different kinds of material will refract light in a different manner. So let's see, for example, if I put this concrete panel in, you'll notice it gets lighter. Or if I put these concrete tiles in, 
again, looks different because they're darker. So there's various different things we can do here, you know. But for the minute, let's find just something fairly regular looking. So not basalt. Here we are, marble. Let's make it really shiny and far too bright. So there you go. There's some marble or even some sandstone. There, sandstone works. I like it. Right. So with that done, I just click on anything else just to get everything deselected. And we've got a nice room set up here. So first things first, it's still a little bit dark. OK, so we want to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press back. And if I scroll down here, OK, to props. And inside props, we've got some pre-built meshes that we can use. And if I come down, you can see we've got SM lamp ceiling. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to drag that to my ceiling and just place it round about in the middle there. OK, now, if it doesn't place properly, that's because my snaps are on. You'll see it's kind of part way through the ceiling. So I'm going to hit delete and turn off snapping and then do that again. And there we go. And now the pivot point of this will align with the ceiling, makes it a bit easier. Now, this light isn't actually emitting any light. It's got a glowing bulb, which is what I was talking about when we talk about glowing emissives, but it doesn't actually have um, a light itself coming out of it. So it's not giving any power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly show you a couple of lights that we can use. So I'm going to rip off my content browser here and put it out of the way. And over here on our main place actors panel, you can see this light. If I click that, these are the five main types of light that we get in Unreal Engine. So directional, which is our sun, point lights, which are like light bulbs, spotlights, which are like directed light bulbs, rectangular lights, which are great for doing like light bouncing and stuff for photography and stuff like that, and a skylight. And a skylight is very, very important for um, controlling global illumination and light bounces and things. That's over here. There's already one in the scene. If I turn this off, you'll see our scene gets very strange because it doesn't have any global illumination. But there we go. Turn it back on again. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a basic point light in our scene. So if I click it and drag it in, and you can see it's overpoweringly bright. They are always set up far too bright. Now, what I want to do is I want to get this in the same position as this lamp, more or less. So what I can do is if I click on my lamp, remember what I said about we have access to location, rotation, and scale. Its location is what interests me. So if I right click and do copy, that will copy its location. So I just cop anywhere next to the word location, I'll click there. Now, if I come over to this one and right click on its location and click paste, it's on its pivot point. So it's right at the very top. So now I know I can just bring it straight down until it's about there inside of the lab shade. Okay, so it's in the right place and it's glowing nice and bright. Now, let's have a look at some of its settings. So the important ones are intensity, and at the minute it's using candlers. Now, eight's quite high. Let's say four candlers will be enough. We don't need too much illumination at the minute. And it's very rare that things are white light because white is far too clinical and clean. So if I click on that, and we'll maybe add just a touch of yellow into it or some other color just to give it a tiny bit of uh, tinting. I mean, it doesn't make a damn difference to me being colorblind, but it makes a difference to other people. There we go. Now, another thing that we have to bear in mind is that if you turn a light on in an empty room, you know, especially a large empty hallway, light doesn't go forever. Now, you can see here the edge of a circle, OK, this sphere. And this is the light's attenuation radius. This is how far the light's going to affect. Now, most of the time, you don't want the attenuation radius too large. It's not a Klieg light. So you'll change your attenuation radius to maybe half that, 500. And now you can see that we get that much more realistic light pooling underneath the light. OK, so that's one way of doing it. Now, another way we could do it is if I go to my prop panel just over here. I'll not snap it to anything this time. I'll just leave it loose. There we go. And here, I'll drag out a wall lamp and just stick it on the wall. OK, now, same as before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it, OK, because it's halfway through the wall, just so it's facing the right direction. There we are. And then I'm going to get a copy 
of its location. Right click, copy. Now, what I want this time is a spotlight. I'm going to pull one of them out. And my spotlight here, if I just paste, right click and paste, get its location where I need it. And then I'm going to move it up so that it's on top of the lamp and then adjust it. So I want basically my barrel of light to come out like this. And I'm going to spread it nice and wide. So to make it nice and wide, what I'll do is I'll increase my outer cone angle like that. And then from the intense light in the middle, I'll normally make that half. So 30, 60. So we've got a focused beam of light and then a slightly less focused beam of light coming out of this. Another thing I can do as well is the light bulb is bigger than a tiny point. So I could say, well, our light bulb's 10 centimeters across. And I could say, let's give it a soft source of 15. And that way it's going to soften the light as it comes out. And then as before, maybe reduce the angles to four. And for this one, I'm going to change the light color to the same color as the object it's coming out of. So I just clicked on my little, um, what do you call eyedropper. And then I could just click on an item in there and it'll pick up the color of that. So there you go. Well, that's two things we've done already. Now, these two lights, two important things, two lights. An important thing we need to go over here is when I click on them, either of them at the minute, they're static or stationary. Now, what that means is that we're going to have to bake our scene. We're going to have to cook all the lights and bake out all of our textures so that we can get lighting information. And I'm lazy and hate doing that. So click on movable. And now we never have to do that. Do that for this one as well. So we'll find this one. Click on movable. And if you click on our skylight, that's already movable. Uh, what about our other lights? Hang on, I'll just type in the word light up here. There we go, that looks small. Directional light, that's also movable. There we go, job done. So now we never have to build any lighting. So we've got two basic lights here, one top light and one kind of fill light here. Now, there's one other thing we can do with these lights. I mean, there's a lot of things we can do, but to immediately make them look better. So if I click on this, just our light itself, another thing we can do is we can come down here to keep going, keep going, IES textures, okay? And IES textures are basically light profiles for real world lights. You can find IES texture libraries for free on the internet and download them all They're about half a K each, they're tiny. And I've already got one loaded in here for complex IES. And if I click on that, there we go, it's done that. Click away and you can see that it's a much more complicated light shape, leaving a much more complicated kind of light pattern on the ceiling. So let's bring its uh, lumen intensity down to two and its attenuation radius to 450 just to bring it in a bit more, maybe a bit less, maybe 300. The attenuation radius is basically how far your light goes. You don't want them going too far for little lights. You know, that's why we have lots of lights illuminating scenes rather than just one. Two lights, press G, nice and simple. It's lit. Okay, what next? I'm going to bring this down a tiny bit. It's probably just come down. There we go. Well, let's put some simple furniture in our scene. So if I go back to my props panel again, which I've probably closed, I'll pull down my other one. There we are. Uh, let me see. Go to the start of content props. And for this one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a very simple chair and table. So here's a chair, a table, sorry. Grab that, put it here, pretty much underneath the light, nice and central. And then I'm going to grab these chairs like this. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chairs and just hold alt and drag them, alt and drag them. Just keep doing that until I've got four chairs around my table and then I can rotate them. And because I tend to think of humans as not being 100% of putting things away unless they've got mad OCD, like really bad positioning OCD, I tend to have things like slightly off because it tends to make them look slightly more human. And then on top of this, uh, if I look at my prop pile, I've got a statue. So I'll just drag that to the middle of the table. There we go. And then I've got an ornamental rock, which I'll just put here for no apparent reason. And I'll change its scale to half on one of thing. There we go. So there's a nice ornamental rock. There we go. And that is a very simple way of dressing a scene. OK, so what we've done there is we've used some very simple um, pre-given props to kind of start dressing our scene up and putting things inside of it. 
and we put some simple lights in just to add interest. Now, this is the important thing because I try and explain this to my students as much as I possibly can, especially when they're coming in for things like game dev and stuff. Not so much architects, but you know, if they're coming in for game dev, is that empty walls like this look amateur. Okay, they're not what you're after. What you need is basically things. Now, I'm not talking clutter, we're not going for a hoarder's handbag here, but you do have to have some thought about what would go on these walls in this place. If it's an office, what would be here? So for example, there may be, if I grab a cube to represent it and turn scale off, you may have some posters on the wall. So for example, I can represent some posters for the minute just by kind of doing this and maybe having you know a couple of pictures on the wall like that and like that. Or maybe over on this screen, you might have like, you know, a large television so that you can like display stuff to people if they're having a presentation or a meeting or something. So there's a television. And then over here against the wall, well, we've got this cube, we could have some cupboards. So again, this is very basic, but hopefully you're getting the idea if I'll put this against here and, you know, all civilizations have needed tables. Let's put it this way. So there you go. There's a simple table or cupboard or whatever, just going across there like that. And then because I've already got some basic props anyway, what I can then do is I can go, well, I'll put another ornament here, or I can put a rock on top of this and drop it scale down. But you can keep using the same object over and over again. All you have to do is just rescale it. And suddenly it's like you're using a completely different object. No one knows. It's like, I keep telling everyone it's smoke and mirrors and it really is with game development. Um, let's say I just, you know, rotate this one after copying it. I'm going to make it a teeny bit bigger by scaling it up. There we go. And then rotate it like five degrees. And so it's like, it's a completely different rock. You know, it isn't. It's literally the same rock. But this is how quick and easy it is to do this. You know, let's say you've got a quick model of a book, or if you haven't got a quick model of a book, a cube's going to do it again. There's a cube. So to make a book, all you want to do is, Make a very thin cube like that. There we go. And then make a friend for it just about there. Too thick. There we go. Bear in mind, I'm freehanding this like crazy, so I do apologize. But I do love freehanding. So I'm just scaling, scaling. And this is like pure poly editing when it comes down to it. And then I'll get a cylinder. Okay, because everything can be broken down into these basic shapes everything. Now I'll scale it. I'll just scale it on. You can scale it on only two axes by grabbing the handle in between only two of them. There we go. So I'll just try to show you kind of how I'm making a basic pretend book. There we go. And scale it in a bit more. Whee! And put it up to about there. Okay, so it's in between. So we've got a book back on, basically. You get the point. Move that in a bit. Yeah, so we've basically built like a, a quick, dirty book shape, like that one. Uh, it's not quite in the right place yet. Now, if I'm moving too fast, what I can do is I can go here at camera speed and that'll slow down my movement, which makes things so much easier. It really does. There we go. About there, about there. Scale it a bit more. There we go, that'll do it for the minute. So you get the idea. And then inside this, let's say I want to put an actual book cover, so I'll drag that up. And then do that, hit too much. And then like that. And a little bit over here. Not you, you, there we go. Okay, so what we've done now is basically we've created a very, very simple kind of book shape. And what I could do is, and this seems a little bit long here. Sorry, I'm spurging a bit here, you have to bear with. There we go. There we go. So I've made a very, very quick and dirty kind of book cover here, but you get the general idea. And then all I need to do is have that white, have these two parts of the book here looking a different colour. So I'll just see if I've got, I doubt I've got a leather material in this, but... You never know. Here we go. Solid gold book. There you go. There's a gold book and there's a gold bit on it. There you go. This bottom bit here can be gold as well. Why not? There you go. So there's a quick gold book. And the good thing is that you can literally, like I say, 
just change this to your heart's content. So you can build very, very simple shapes like this book and just dot them around your level. And if I select all the parts that made up the book, so I just held control and selected them all, I can do a control G, that will group them. And now I can move them all as one piece and I can rotate them. And I, you know, maybe I've got a few of these solid gold books here, just in case people want to come and read a solid gold book, they now can, or I can stack my solid gold books on top of each other. Okay, and it's literally that easy. So there we go, three solid gold books. Now you can use, you know, pipes and things to make all manner of stuff. So if I grab in a cylinder again, so here's a cylinder here, and let's say I change its X and Y to 0 0.2, so it's a nice thin cylinder, and then use my scale tool to make it nice and long. There we go. Suddenly we have plumbing and pipe work. Now, if you're making plumbing or pipe work, I think I'll make this a teeny bit thinner, actually. There we go. So I'll make it 0 0.1, 0 0.1. There we go. So if you're making plumbing or pipe work, then what you need to do is you need to have like receiver ends and stuff like that. It's a little bit more complicated than just having a pipe. So I'll press Alt and drag. I'll scale it in my copy and I'll increase its scale to 0 0.15, 0 0.15 on these two. Don't worry, I promise it'll make sense. I just need to scale it in a bit. And there we go. And now if I have some metal knocking around, I now have a receiver end at both ends that's holding this in place like that. And if we want to go in one step further, because these polygons cost nothing to make, you know, they would take a couple of minutes. Let's say I'll make another copy and I'll just quickly scale it that way and then that way. And now I've got a ceiling mount for it. If I want to be doubly clever, what I could then do, and I know you're going, Jesus, when will it end? Let's say I'll drag the cylinder onto that and make it scale 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, so tiny, fits in one again. 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, there we go. And now what I've got is I've got rivets. And again, what you're doing now is you're basically, something people don't realize they can do, I have to explain this all the time, you're literally modeling inside of Unreal Engine. And these are adding detail while at the same time costing nothing. Because if you're only copying an existing asset, the asset only exists in Unreal Engine once. So you could have an entire scene with thousands of these things in, and Unreal Engine isn't going to slow down any. Okay, that's not going to cause it any much of a headache. So you can see what a difference that's made. Now, what can I do with this? Well, let's say I'll grab this little bracket here and pull it down. And then I can do, you know, turn it. So I'll do a rotate. And I'm just trying to give you ideas here of what I'm doing. Okay, pull that into there. So it's halfway. And then I could grab this one, just rotate it. So I'm just making copies again. And this is the reason I'm doing this is I want you to realize you don't need to have expensive props to make very, very detailed things. You don't need to be like a fantastic modeler. You don't need to be any of these things. These are just basic shapes. Think of it like Lego. If you've ever played with Lego, this is the same. It's just, we have infinite bricks. We're never gonna run out of the blue ones. There we go. But now we have, you know, a quite a complicated connecting kind of pipe system there. What does it do? Who knows? I don't fucking care, but you know, it looks good and that's the point. And then if we look through our props again, I might even find something that connects to that if I really try hard. So let's see, do, 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 probably not, but oh, there you go. Let's stick a shelf next to it, just above it like that. There you go. Now we've got a shelf above it. And on the shelf up here, this will be a nice place to store my collection of cylinders. Uh, there you go, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. There we go. Why are they cylinders? Well, they might not be. They could be cans of paint. The thing is, a cylinder can represent anything. Now, all I'm doing is I'm copying them. I'm not copying them in a straight line. I'm not copying them in a straight line because most of us don't tend to assemble things in straight lines unless we're having a very boring afternoon. Okay, so there we go. So always put a little bit of human character into stuff when you're doing it. There we go, put that one up there. Moving along a bit. 
And as if by magic, they now have a shelf with stuff on it. What's the stuff? I don't know, but it drew our interest for five seconds. Okay, so if we look at this and look at what I've done now, this is the fundamental basics of everything to do with game development, okay? Because in game development and level design, which is kind of what we're looking at here, kind of combination of the two, if you come across a room where there's a door at one end and a door at the other, then what tends to happen is Billy game player will rush in. So let's say we're coming from over here and like, oh, fucking hell, I'm coming in. Ah, bang, 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 bang. And they're out again, right? So your game is going to be slow. Your game is going to be very quick to finish because they're rushing through it like it's all tomorrow. But if they come in here and the scene holds their attention, even for five seconds, you've added five seconds to your gameplay. Now, if on top of that, you, you know, you make them go around something, slow them down, they're not going to get annoyed as long as there's something interesting to look at. Off. They're not going to slow down if they're going to slow down if there's something interesting to look at, even for a second, because they don't know if it's to do with the gate. So it's like, why is that paint up there? Why are those books there? Is the television on? Look at them rock. Okay. And again, this is what I say to like people who I'm teaching, even if they're from like established game studios. It's all about teaching the showing the player there's something there, so they'll slow down. Just getting them to go, oh wait, there's something to do between shooting this guy in the balls and coming out of here and shooting some other guy in the balls. You know, it's basically slowing them down. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. You clear with that, Faye, yeah? Okay. okay. So the challenge that I want to set for you guys this week is just using the basics. So you've got cubes, cylinders, cones, planes, and everything that comes with the starter content. Okay. And what I want you to do is this is your start point here, this window. And this is your end point over here. Now, I don't care what the theme is, okay? But what I would like is I'd like the pair of you over the next week, because I'm giving you a whole week to have a play around. And, you know, if you get stuck, I am here. But I want you to have a think, put down some basic first level assets. So like tables, chairs, things like that. Things that are kind of in the way. Don't flutter it because that frustrates people. But at the same time, try and tell a story with it. I mean, the story here already is, you know, this looks like some sort of a, you know, a cheap office building. They've got cans up here. Well, they've got cans up there. They must have to store stuff in their main office. You know, what are these books over here? You're trying to tell a story without using words. And at the same time, you can't use the tools that Unreal Engine has given you so that you don't have to create new ones. Um, if you want to create a new doorway, for example, using a cube, you can, you know, just stretch it out. Don't worry about, you know, textures and things for the minute. We're not interested in that. What we're interested in is learning how to build things using the basic tools that we've been given. Because everything comes from this same group of basic tools. Everything is a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, a cone or a plane. You know, you look around your room and everything is made from that. Admittedly, some of them are subtractive. And I'll be talking about how we subtract shapes from other shapes next week as we move on to doing slightly more advanced things. For the minute, additive is fine, okay? Additive will look really good. I mean, that's not bad considering we just used some free crap that came out of Unreal Engine. That would hold me for about seven seconds before I moved on to shoot someone in the cock, you know? So I reckon that would be it. Now, uh, what time is it? But, but, but oh, not bad, only took an hour. So I'm going to leave you with this homework to do, okay, for the week. I've also got a video because I'm recording this, and I can I can send you it or put it on YouTube or whatever it is you may like. That's not a problem either. Um, before I close up, though, and there's no such thing as a stupid one, I always, like, I always marvel at how silent people are, and then they come back to me quietly via email with, like, I didn't understand. Seriously, if there's something you want me to go over again, my time is currently yours. <laughs> That's a lot of silence, dudes. And dudettes. Holy shit. No, uh, I'm fine. You're fine with this. Yeah. It's not going to put too much, like, you know, work on you doing it and shit like that. No, it sounds like something interesting to do rather than looking at properties. Well, to be honest, I mean, this isn't, this isn't hard. And it's a fun way of getting you into it. You know, the lighting stuff is important. Um, Thorn's been banging his head with light before. 
which is why I kind of decided to come back here and start at this stage. OK, the lighting needs to be controlled. It's very, very tempting to go, oh, I'll just put one light in, make it 16 and increase this to 3,500 at the attenuation. OK, and you can do that. It'll make your entire scene bright, but look how flat it is. OK, that's not what we want. We don't want flat, oversaturated scenes. What we want is we want scenes where we've got complex buildups of lights. So the lights layer on top of each other and each light should give character and bring something to your scene. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? Now, you can duplicate. So you can have, you know, multiple lights, for example, on each wall. So, for example, I could just copy this across and put it there like that. So you can have things like that. But use it wisely. You don't need to have it on every single wall, for example. You don't need a strip of nine of them down here or something. Think about what's there. If you're going to build, for example, a cupboard with some brooms in it, would it need lots of light or does it just need one stark light inside of it? Have a think about, you know, what you're putting there, what the story is. Sometimes you don't need light because light tells a very important story when it comes to game development and level design. You know, because that's well lit over here, but over here isn't particularly, you know that you're supposed to go over there. So it's acting better than a navigation map would. You know, this is what a lot of games already do. So if you watch the Horizon Zero Dawn or things like that, they're very, very strong on using light to take you to the next place. You don't even realize it. It's just a psychological trick. So think about it. Think about how you're being led by it. If you're not sure, show me a couple of grabs. Ask my opinion. I'll be honest. I'll tell you what I think you need to change and what you don't need to change. OK, because that's what I, that's what I do. But at the same time, I think it will give you some valuable kind of uh, understandings of things. Most important thing, was, well, not the most, but an important thing, remember, G turns you into game mode, G turns you off game mode. Right click, play from here if you just want to have a wander around and see what it would look like if you'd actually built it. And I mean, I built this in what, 40 minutes, if that. And it's presentable. You know, I'd have no problem to be quite honest telling someone it and going, I did that it's not bad is it you know because that's the point you want something where you can look at it and go yeah i did that um i think you'll be pleased with you'll be pleased with your own progress any idea by the end of the week now it's up to you if you want to go with any particular theming personally i'd go with this kind of modern office for the first one next week we're going to add to it and we're going to use a completely different set and you'll have some lovely new props and i'll give you all sorts of things that you can do with them but we'll start with this one for this week, just so you can use the very basic tools. Yep. Yep. Excellent stuff. Right. Any questions from anything? Your Thorn looks like he's dead on his feet. Bless your little heart. Poor Thorny. I'll give you a I'll give you a virtual virtual back pat as well, because you're like all the way over there. There you go, Faye. All right then. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this down. Do you want me to send you the video over, Faye? Yeah, please. Not a problem. I'll stick that on the old uh, YouTubes. And I shall see you very, very shortly. Perfect. See you later. Have a good morning. Wait. Now, where's the go? Where's the turning this off button? I've forgotten. Oh, hang on. That one. Yeah.